Writing is a fundamental part of our education system as well as our world as a whole. We have to focus on how we teach writing to students. The writing process can actually begin before students can actually write. According to Tompkins, the argument is a part of the everyday life. With that being said, we can work with students on the art of argument and argumentative writing at a very early age. This chapter encouraged the use of graphic organizers to help students at an early age as well as an older age process their thoughts and plan out their writings. With the younger students, the argument tend to be one-sided, so their planning may not be thorough. As students get older and more mature, they are able to see both sides of an argument and can plan their writing to give credit to both sides of the argument. I have noticed this in the middle school classroom. Students use the graphic organizers to jot down all of their ideas and then organize the material in a way that makes sense for their writing piece. It has been extremely useful in the middle school classroom. Another thing we must focus on as educators is critical literacy. There was a quote in Saving Black Mountain, the promise of critical literacy in a multicultural democracy that stuck out to me. It said, as educators, we are not accustomed to thinking of literacy instruction as having democratic aims. Rather, literacy is typically associated with economic aims. After really thinking about this statement, I agree. We teach literacy skills with the goal of having our students be able to use those skills in other classes and into their career later in life. This would be considered the economic aim. How are the skills we are teaching going to help our students be constructive members of society and help improve the economy? Even though this is the case, we do still teach our students critical literacy, which according to the article promotes a strong democracy in the students in that students are encouraged to consider all sides of an issue in the decision making process, including views of persons whose perspectives have traditionally been marginalized or even silenced in schools and society. I think this is really important when we start talking about argumentative writing and persuasive writing that students understand that there are two sides to every story um, or every argument and that they need to be able to consider both sides and give credit to both sides. We run into issues oftentimes as educators of wanting to teach something to our students because we can see the benefits of the topic or the lesson, but it doesn't fall under the umbrella of the state or district guidelines. It comes down to power in the education system. In the article, Reclaiming Power in the Writer's Workshop, Kissel and Miller talk about teachers and students feeling helpless in the classroom because they are having to follow such uncompromising standards, rules, and regulations. This makes it almost like we are we have a checklist that we have to check off. Um, did we meet this standard? Did we read this story? Did we write this article? We as teachers get irritated with that because oftentimes we're not able to teach the things that we could see as being beneficial to our students and our students feed off of that. They get frustrated as well and they don't give as good of quality as, of work as we could possibly get from them if they were given an assignment on something they're interested in. How are we supposed to encourage our students to think outside of the box as well as to think critically if we're setting the precedent to just make sure all the boxes are checked off. What are we really teaching our students through this concept? In order to get students to buy into writing and want to be more creative in their writing, they must first be excited. They have to have buy-in. Hanson did a great job in writing for justice, persuasion from the inside out, of explaining different ways to get the buy-in from students. We have to give them options and allow them to write about their passions. If you were to give me an assignment about farm life, I could write for days. If you give me an assignment to write about the Space Center, I could care less about that, honestly. And it, I, it would be a struggle for me to write an article on that or an essay on that or a research paper on that because that doesn't fall into my line of interest. We also have to make writing assignments relevant for students. 
if students don't see how an assignment can benefit them or how they can relate it to their lives, they're less likely to be successful with the assignment. These are just some of the ways that we can get buy-in from our students. Um, this week's module really hit home for me because I do struggle a lot of times with having to go by that checklist from the district of these stories need to be read, these books need to be read, these writing prompts need to be answered. When oftentimes I could come up with a hundred different lessons helping students with what's going on in their life and still covering the state standards. Um, I think that is something that needs to be addressed and continue to be addressed until it's fixed with the district and with the state itself.